Hey there, my name is Chris, and today we're going to be working on an automotive application. If you've ever worked on automotive applications, you're probably familiar with one of these. This is a Bosch style relay. Basically, we use these to switch a high current circuit from a low current source. We're going to be switching it today with a microcontroller. We're going to use this Arduino, but really this procedure would be the same for any microcontroller. So if you're using an STM32, a Raspberry Pi, anything like that, that has a digital output that we want to drive from software, but we want to switch a relay. Let's get to it. Today's challenge is we want to drive this automotive relay with our microcontroller. Now the big challenge here is this microcontroller, its outputs are 3.3 volts. These are designed to run on automotive voltage, so nominally 12 volts, but usually somewhere more around 14 volts. The other challenge is the activation current for this, so the amount of current that has to go through to activate this coil and close the relay is usually significantly more than you can safely source from an output on a microcontroller. So first, let's just do a quick sanity check, find out how much current this thing takes and test that, and then figure out how we can drive this safely from our microcontroller. Whenever you're building a circuit, you want to do a quick calculation to find out if the amount of current that you're going to be running through something is going to cause problems. Automotive electrical circuits are called 12 volt, but really they run higher than that. They usually run around 14 volts for a little bit of margin of error. Let's call it 15 volts. We know Ohm's law, V equals IR, we can rearrange that. So I is voltage over resistance. So how much current is going to go through this coil when it's activated? Well, we want to figure out current at say 15 volts. So let's measure the resistance on this. The coil is from here to here. So we have about 80 ohms of resistance. So we can put in 80 ohms here, and we get about 190 milliamps of current. This Arduino is using an ATmega328 processor. So if we go look at the data sheet for it, we can see the maximum DC current for the I.O. pins is 40 milliamps right here. So if we exceed 40, we're going to damage this microcontroller. So that tells us we definitely do not want to try to drive that relay directly. The reality is the voltage output from the microcontroller is only 3.3 volts, and that would not switch it even if we could source enough current. So what's the solution? Well, in our case, we're going to use one of these. This is a field effect transistor, or a FET, or a MOSFET. Let's go take a look at how we wire this up. FETs come in, generally speaking, two varieties, NPN and PNP. In this case, we're going to be using an NPN, and the symbol for that looks like this. This is our gate, this is our drain, and this is our source. For our application, we're going to hook this drain right to the coil in our relay, so this is our relay, and this is the activation switch over here. This would be the normally closed, and this is the normally open. But we're just driving this, and we would connect this right up to our 12 volts for the car. And down here, we just connect this right to ground. So all of our work is really going to be over here. Now we're going to hook this into our digital output from our microcontroller. And we're going to go through a resistor to limit current. And we're going to use a 10K resistor here. In an ideal situation, this is all we need. But sometimes, especially when we're first powering up our microcontroller, this might be in a floating state, so it's indeterminate, and it can cause this to cycle up and down a bunch. So what we want to do is we want to force it into a state which is off when we're not activating it. So we're just going to put in a resistor here, 
and it's just fairly high resistance, we'll put in a 50K here to pull it down. So now this is open when this is off. So when we drive our digital output high, it's going to activate this, which is going to close it, which is going to allow electricity to flow from our 12 volt system through that relay coil and down to ground. That's all there is to it. Let's go wire this up on a breadboard and see it in action. So this is our full setup. This is just the power supply that goes from 12 volts down to five to power our microcontroller. I've added a few components over here. I'll put a link up here to why I did that. There's another video. What we're really interested in today is this bit right here. So this is our FET. The center is this gate. And then we have over on this side, the left side, that is our source. And then the right side is the drain. You can see from this gate, we go through this resistor over to our digital output. Here's our pull down to ground. And then this comes up to ground. And then I just took a relay, soldered a couple of wires to it. And I'm going to hook it to right here on the drain. And then this red line at the bottom, this is 12 volts. So I can hook it anywhere in here. And that's getting 12 volts from over here. I've hooked up a bench power supply, so we have 15 volts coming in here. This outputs five. So we've got five turning on this. Now, right now we don't have any code running over on the Arduino, but everything else is hooked up. I can test this with a simple jumper wire the Arduino has 3.3 volt power here, so we can hook to it. And then if we just touch it to this resistor, it will activate that relay. So we now know that our circuit is activating and doing what it should with 3.3 volts. Let's write some code just to verify that our code can do the exact same thing. I have a very, very simple application here. We're going to be driving on pin two. In setup, we're going to set it as an output. And then I just have a counter that increments infinitely. And we're going to do a modulo division. So basically on evens, we're going to set it high and on odds, we'll set it to low. So once per second, it's going to toggle the state of the output, which should toggle the state of the relay. Let's push this to our device. And there you can hear the relay cycling. And that's it for today. Driving an automotive relay from a microcontroller. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.